Good evening, good morning, good night, depending on where you are at. Thanks for joining, and today we're gonna to go over what happened in the market today. S&P 500 hit the 200-day moving average, which on my charts is a black line. That means it's like 200 soldiers, you know, holding you back for the price to go higher. So what did we do today? Well, let me show you. We did a little bit of a pullback, right? A small little pullback on the, um, you can really see it on the five minute chart. So check this out. 431.73 was the high. Guess what, on the daily chart, we see that this 200 day moving average, this black line coming down here, this goes to show you that the charts do matter, right? So what did it do today? Price, which is represented by this candlestick, went up and touched the 200 day and then it quickly backed off of that. Why? Well, I brought up in the last video that guess what? We haven't touched this 200 day moving average since all the way over here, all the way over here in April, April 21st, right? April 20th, 420, 421. So now we just touched it again, right? So we're gonna do a little bit of a pullback on that because that's a big deal. It's a very big deal to go and touch a moving average that you haven't touched in five months. So the market's taking a break. It's understanding, whoa, we moved a lot. Let's see where it goes from here, right? So we could do what it did last time over here and we could pop through the 200 day moving average, right? And what did it do? It popped through it and it came right back inside of it. Let me squeeze this together so it's a little bit cleaner. So we were below it, right? And in March, 417, 418, 416, um, kind of where we were getting stuck recently, right, on the price on S&P 500, SPY, and we went above the 200 day moving average, and then we went, continued to go below it, and really go below it, and um, ride this lower Bollinger Band here. So, anything can happen right now, but what the market is doing is it's kind of taking a, a breather, right? If you eat too much food, you gotta sit down for a second, drink some water, maybe go to sleep. Well. It's a perfect time because guess what? This is when the yachts are getting gassed up. Everyone's getting on their yachts. They're going to the Mediterranean. All the billionaires that are pushing the buttons, all the money managers, they're going with the billionaires, right? So they're gonna be taking vacation the last couple weeks of August into September. Well, when they come back from their vacation in September, maybe after Labor Day or the second week in September, first week in September, they might go and click the sell button because things have actually done pretty well since June. So that's just something that I noticed here. I wanted to bring up to you guys that we are gonna take a breather here. Uh, we could push a little higher, but it's time to go back and retest what we did. So I'm not gonna stay biased on that. It's probably what's gonna happen. Anything can happen. That's why you just gotta roll with the punches, right? Today, made a quick $70 trading today on the SPY um, and just one real quick trade on Tesla. But on the SPY, uh, bought a put option when I saw it tap the 200 and cross, do a 3X, did a 3X here on the five. You could see a cross on price, on uh, Stoke, MACD, and DMI. So it was almost a 4X, which is really, really handy. But you can see how this is. It's, it's a little sloppy here, but it's um, RSI usually crosses before MACD and DMI. And then once the DMI crosses, that's a trade. And you can see the histograms getting larger and kind of going to a tip there and kind of coming back. So how do you know, this is when you know how to enter a trade. How do you know when to exit a trade? So the entry is on a 3X, right? And the exit is not on a 3X. The exit is when it's outside of a blue band, this blue band right here, the bottom Bollinger Band, or when Stoke crosses against you and it's down in the oversold, right? This is overbought and oversold. So when it hits this oversold level, anywhere in here is a good sell point. Um, you don't wanna wait until MACD crosses against you, most likely, because you're giving up quite a bit of what you could have gained here. Um, but that could be an exit, right? When MACD crosses against you, when the histograms start getting smaller and they start turning green, and then DMI crosses against you. So you don't wanna wait too long to get back out if, if it could go against you here, which it did. And when you're trading options like I did today, it's very consistent. You wanna sell into the momentum. You don't wanna sell while the stock's starting to rise. 
you want to sell your put option, which I bought today, you want to sell it on the way down because then you get the best dollar for dollar um, cost average there when it's on its way down, right? This move, um, you know, I just used one or two contracts on this move. Very simple. Um, didn't didn't load it up. Didn't do five, ten, hundred, two hundred contracts. Just did something really simple here, um, and. I mean, you can too. It was really cheap to trade this uh, weekly options. So I want you guys to look up weekly options, understand how they work, understand how to buy them, how to sell them, and then we can go over that too in, in, a, in a video. Uh, but this is basically um, a move right here from 430 to you know 431 dollars to 428 dollars, and this little three four dollar move here uh, could easily make you a couple hundred bucks using options but of course you would have had to see this when it happened right at about 2 25 p.m um not everyone can see this when it happens so if you can't see a five minute chart which a lot of people can't and that's okay you can see an hour chart right let's pull up an hour chart and there was no trade on the hour chart but or no exact trade i did we did get a triple cross here right on the indicators but we didn't really play out the whole chart right band to band didn't have enough time the day was almost over so this could continue down tomorrow to go test these levels down here these lines this EMA this lower band and then the 50-day moving average could go and test all of this right let's see what happens um, but what I can tell you is that guess what the daily chart is still pointing up so you got to listen to the daily chart if you're gonna trade an hour chart uh, and right now it's still up that could change tomorrow let's see this 200 day moving average right 200 day simple moving average is no joke right it's a it's a line of defense it could pop through it it's going to hang around it for a little bit possibly and it could pull on back because we've been extended we've made this huge move from july right from june from july retesting that all the way till august right so one month literally one month to the day we've been just steadily climbing right so we might need to go back and test this climb and see if it holds uh, so I just wanted to bring that up overall the market was you know a lot of things sold off Tesla sold off a couple bucks eight bucks not a big deal solar stock sold off a little bit things are starting to act tired I've noticed um, the last couple days the 10-year note TNX is a 10-year note that has been climbing steadily when that hits 3% right now it's at this is a 2.8% when that gets to 3 things get a little wacky and stocks like to sell off because that means money can go somewhere else to generate yield to generate 3% interest or more uh, inside the treasury notes inside bonds so it tends to be sucked out of the stocks and go into bonds at that point um, just some things to look at, right? You want to make sure you're uh, a student of the market and understand what's going on underneath. Now, I can show you something frothy that happened today that I had no part in and did not touch, but I, I like to watch when these things happen because it's really interesting. So Bed Bath & Beyond had a lot of buyers, maybe short covering, who knows, right? So this morning, let's pull it up, 9.30, market open, 9.30 a.m., open at $16, ran to $28, right at one point it was up like a hundred percent or more um 16 to 28 right that's almost 100 percent, 80 percent and then we dropped back down after that big push went sideways and then sold off towards the end of the day because guess what investors don't want to hold this crazy stock overnight you know overnight it could drop down to five bucks who knows or ten dollars so they took their profits right here early on started at 230 people taking profits um, that's what you'll see with these stocks. They'll pump up in the morning, drift, and then they can sell off in the day. Uh, I don't know if there was any news on Bed Bath & Beyond, if they're doing partnerships or whatever. It just, just happens. Sometimes this stuff happens. What you can do to find these, which I do not recommend doing, it's just a waste of time really, but I'll show you. You can do a scan here. All right, you scan. You can do a scan with last volume price change. 0.5% or greater and I had it set to 50 cents but let's let's be realistic here let's look for stocks that are um, let's put no max because it doesn't matter but five dollar minimum click scan right you can you can basically set this up inside the scan 
um, stock hacker app on TD Ameritrade and you can scan the market and see the percent change and organize it by this and be able to see what everything did during the day. So at one point, um, Bed Bath & Beyond was right at the top, right? 388 million shares traded today. That is a lot of volume, right? That's not normal. Fubo was crazy volume, moved two bucks, which was 50% because it was only, you know, $4 before that move. And you, so these things are very newsy. Um, it's like a lottery ticket. Sure, whatever you're gonna spend on lottery tickets, spend on these, but you're not gonna get rich trading these um, unless you win the lottery, right? I mean, it's it's a lottery, it's, not, it's nothing crazy. Um, there's no strategy behind some of this stuff. Uh, it's just news or a big rush to buy. Um, yeah, that's just kind of what I saw today. Just some froth, some speculation here. So that, that's uh, another sign that, you know, we might not be done testing the very lows of the market just because there's so much speculation. Um, just wanted to show you where we're at, right? What's possible during the day? What's possible if you're looking at a higher time frame chart, such as the hour or half hour? I'll just give you an idea of what happened today. And um, I hope you the best. Keep on trading. Keep on making it happen. Like always, please like and subscribe. Uh, help, me, help me build this channel up and I want to provide as much value to you guys um, that, that I can. I'm not here to sell you a course. I'm here to show you um, what I see and hopefully that can help you. Alright guys, thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.